Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and welcome to this week's episode of The Knife Guy. So what are we talking about today? I was thinking more about, you know, my <laughs> my overall experience with folding knives and uh, I don't think it's any, you know, revelation that uh, people who get really, really, really invested in this type of enthusiast collector world, um, it's one long attempt at recreating the best experience you've ever had with something. And uh, usually, you know, this is going to be partially relatable and partially not relatable. Usually with this series, um, which is just like a one-man podcast, um, I try to talk about things that are universally relatable. Um, today I'm going to be talking about something that is not always completely and totally relatable. There's a lot of different, you know, experiences that, that you can have. I mean, you you know, a lot of us, the, the general um, sort of... It, the, the path we go down for acquisition is we discover something, whether it's, you know, maybe it's on Instagram, a lot of times on Instagram, it's on YouTube, you guys see a lot of stuff on my channel, and then you research it. You do your own research, whether you watch my review or you watch somebody else's review, maybe you watch a whole bunch of reviews, then you go and look at a bajillion different pictures of it, and then you try to figure out, like, how can I fit this into my budget, right? And so you have this, you're building up this expectation from this sliver of experience that you have, you know, just looking at it and listening to other people talk about it, listening to other people turn it over, and then you buy it and it ships to your house and it, it gets to you and either you are completely and totally let down by it, you're kind of like, yeah, this is what I expected, or it blows you away, right? But you have this sort of, you already knew that it existed, right? That's the typical way that that goes down. Um, then there's kind of the, uh, you know, it, what's, what's a little bit different is, um, experiencing it for the first time in person, right? Which doesn't happen nearly as often. Generally speaking, right? The stuff that's available for the masses to experience for the first time in person is more common stuff, right? Like when you go to Walmart, what do you see? Buck, Kershaw, Gerber, maybe Sog, Schrade. Do they still do Schrade at Walmart? Um, yeah, they do stuff like that. So, uh, you know, a lot of times, and I, I remember, you know, it, it, it's funny, like thinking back to my first experience, I remember just casually walking up to that Walmart counter like I had many times before and was, you know, never as wowed as I was. I was like, let me see that. Kershaw blur and you handle it and you holy moly the lightning right wow had no idea at that time no idea how many more times over that experience could be amplified by experiencing some of these other things right no idea most of the stuff that I get to experience right is stuff that I am aware of and it comes in and you know like I have so much stuff coming in I forget about it and then it comes in and I open up and I go, oh yeah, I forgot about this, right? And I freak out. That's a crazy experience for me, right? I, you know, and it's a lot of that is doled by having had similar experiences over and over and over again. Not just with like really cool 50 to 60, $70 knives like the Kershaw Blur, but multiple $100 knives or in some cases, multiple $1,000 knives, right? But the difference is there that I had I had seen these things before in conversation or in pictures, whereas that Kershaw Blur experience is unique because I was just walking around in Walmart, like doing, I don't know, whatever, right? <laughs> Buying pillowcases or something. And I wasn't, there was no part of me that was like, I'm going to buy a knife today. And so I go and look and I just, I just wasn't, ex there was no part of me or my subconscious or anything that was expecting this to happen and then boom, there it was, right? Every now and then this happens with something that I am not expecting or that I have not seen and the power of it is crazy. Uh, the only thing that I knew about the Leong Ma Model 18 
was that it was called the Leong Ma Model 18. And it was actually Jim Skelton who had uh, messaged me and he said, I'm sending you this. I'm also sending you the Leong Ma Model 18. It was by, you know, uh, it was it, it's actually owned by somebody else. You can send it back to him when you're done, but I think you'll like it. And I was like, okay, I trusted Jim. And then I forgot about it. Never went and looked up a picture or anything like that. Or at least I can't remember doing it. And you guys, if you watched that unboxing of this knife, <laughs> I opened it up and I was like, holy crap, I'm buying this. Like that's, that's what happened, right? Insane. That's a, that's, that's one of those things that it's not something that's a super common experience. I'm not saying the general experience of just like being able to just suddenly have something thrust in your face in your physical reality that you can touch and feel because those senses are really important, right? No matter what, you can't, no matter how seasoned you think you are watching videos or handling other knives, you cannot get the full experience of something until you handle it. Many times, how many thousands of videos I've done, I don't even know, like 3,000, right? So many times I've thought, ah, it's not going to be that cool. I... Oh, crap. Well, bah, I was wrong, right? Because I'm touching it and feeling it and experiencing it's different weight and mass and all of that, right? So your senses can only get you so far, no matter what. Factually, your senses can only get you so far until you experience it. So it's a, a an exponential thing when you're not expecting this thing to exist in the universe and then it's just bam, right in front of you and you can experience it, right? It's way crazier when it's something like this. Now, people who go to a knife show, right, you get to have... That's why I'm so jealous of people who have gone to Blade Show. Because you know, going into that show, that you're, you know, like, a lot of a lot of people going to that show are, like, hardcore knife enthusiasts and collectors and, you know, just knife people in general. They go in knowing that they are going to have a unique experience, not once, not twice, but probably dozens of times that day, right? And it's it's hard, because I would imagine, you know, it's, it's like you got to... <laughs> You got to bring like a couple grand. Some people are probably bringing, you know, like multiple tens of thousands of dollars to Blade Show. Not often, right? There are some ultra wealthy people who do that. But it's because they know. Like I am preparing to be blown away by this. We love that. We love to we, we love to be surprised by something. We like that initial impact, impact that shock, right? That thing that you, going into a show, you know you're going to experience that, but it's like you 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 have your guard up, right? You just have like this, whatever you've collected as you're like, I am experienced and cannot be easily impressed. <laughs> oh, holy crap, right? Like that's all, all of us, right? It doesn't matter. The most experienced person in this knife world, the person, he's out there, or she, I don't know who they are, but the person who has legitimately experienced more in this knife world than anybody else, right? Let's say, like, we find, we've got a way, we have some sort of magical device that can just, like, scan everybody's experience and can pinpoint the one person who has the most experience. That person, right, we could put that person within within 10 seconds of finding that person we could introduce that person to something else in the knife world that they have never experienced before and absolutely blow their socks off. That's just, that's just, I mean, that's, that's the same with anything in this world, right? Nobody, no matter how much experience they have, nobody is above being impressed anymore. There's always something new out there, right? We chase that experience, right? So you, I was thinking like, is that the ultimate? Is this the ultimate? Is that what we're doing? It's just, it's just a forever increasing height in this ceiling and we're just constantly chasing that yes like we are constantly chasing it but but is that the ultimate enjoyment that we get out of it no it isn't it isn't the reason that uh you know channels like mine and uh channels that are similar to mine or, or you know channels that are not in the same niche as me but they do it with other things the reason that a lot of that is so popular is because people like me, once we have experienced that, you know, that rush of, 
Oh man, this is cool, right? This is this is so cool. As soon as you're done with your weird little self that you guys have seen me do it a million times and I unbox something and I kind of freak out and I forget that I'm recording this and I have to upload it and put it on YouTube, right? <laughs> as soon as I'm done with that, what do I do? I upload it and put it on YouTube because I like to share it immediately. That's what we want to do, right? Social media is perfect. It's perfect evidence of this. We as human beings, as soon as we experience something that we think is amazing, the first thing we want to do after we're done, we're done being selfish, <laughs> we, we absorb as much as we can for ourselves. And then we're like, I got to show this to everybody, right? That's what, that's what we do. We want other people, we want to watch other people have what we hope is the same experience as us. I think, personally, I actually get more enjoyment out of sharing it with, not just sharing it with other people, but watching other people, or re, a lot of times you have to read it in comment form, right? Experiencing someone else have the same experience as you is probably the, I mean, what it is, is it's the ultimate reaffirmation. It allows you, <laughs> after you have come down from this initial euphoria, it allows you to get a little bit more out of it or vicariously experience it, it over again by watching somebody else do it. It's so weird that we, we do that. And then, then it locks in. And the more that you can do that with other people, look at this, right? So what we do with songs, you know, when you're just going through, <laughs> if you're like me, like in, in uh, whether you're driving, like, like there's, there's types of tunes I like to listen to while I'm driving. There's types of tunes I like to listen to while I'm um, uh, cleaning. Uh, when I was in college, like studying, there's, there's uh, types of music that I like to listen to when I'm doing like metadata on YouTube, which if you're a content creator, you know, all that crap you have to do with all your videos, like that takes up a lot of my time. So I got music there. I got my music for the gym, right? Now, all this other stuff, except for the gym, it's not likely that I'm going to, because I'm not in much of an intense situation. If I'm, at, if I'm at the gym, like I'm kind of expecting, you know, my heart rate to increase. I'm expecting more of that. I've also usually taken a pre-workout. So everything's really heightened, right? I'm also generally listening to really, really intense music. I don't know about you guys. I don't really, I don't, like, I don't listen to Brad Paisley while I'm working out. If you like to listen to Brad Paisley, I... Uh, that's weird. You know, I like to listen to stuff that's intense. I want my blood pumping. I want to get a good workout, right? So if I come across something that is intense, right? It's got a good, you know, this is a generic way of saying it. it's got a good beat. It's got the right intensity. It's got the right progression and sound. And it does all those things, all the clicks, all those little this and that and has the pops and has the rings and has the, the right tone, right? and it's something that is new, <laughs> that is one of the craziest natural highs. And I know a lot of you know exactly what I'm, I'm I think most people know exactly what I'm talking about. That, excuse me, uh, <laughs> that is one of the most intense natural highs that I have ever experienced, is discovering new music when you are already in kind of a heightened state of intensity, right? So you listen to it and it's just, you can feel, feel it's like hot liquid electricity traveling up your spine up your back up the back of your neck into your head and you're just like wow it's just oh my gosh it's like liquid fireworks being blasted into your it's insane so you experience it sometimes maybe maybe you're a little over selfish right <laughs> me i i'm real good friends with the guy who owns the gym and we trade music all the time so a lot of times it's a breakdown of a certain part of the song, and I hear it and I go, oh! <laughs> I just, I throw my headphones on, I have to run to the front of the gym where he's always at. <laughs> and I'm like, listen to this! <laughs> he's like with somebody who's trying to sign up a new membership, and I throw all the paperwork out of the way. And I'm like, get out of here, you can come back anytime. Listen to this right now. Not really, I would never do that. But we do that with music, right? We do the same thing with so many other things and knives. It's definitely, when I, I've got so many people that are like close personal friends of mine. When I, you know, experience something insane, I'm trying to be real careful with this. Um, if you don't know what this is, 
This is a Sharp by Design Arch Nemesis, which in my opinion is one of the greatest folding knives that has ever existed in terms of design and execution. This particular one is an extremely rare version of that. We're talking a full custom USA made knife that is unbelievably difficult to get a hold of in its most basic form, let alone something like this that is full dress, right? So experiencing something like this and then seeing the blade for the first time that has this beautiful carbon fiber weave, without going into as much detail as I did, in my stuttering mess of an unboxing with this with this thing, which is you guys probably just saw it yesterday, which would be Saturday your time. Um, I've never experienced anything like this before. Even seeing pictures of this, right? Even seeing pictures of this, my my in immediately I sent pictures of this to so many people that I knew were in knives, and I was like, look at this freaking thing. What do you think about this? Right? The only the better experiences that I could possibly have with that art, number one, experiencing the Arch Nemesis for the very first time, having not known it exists, right? If somebody sent this to me in secret and I had never known about Brian Ado, the Arch Nemesis, or anything like that, and then opening that thing up, I can only imagine I might die. That's It's actually kind of scary thinking about that. I'm, that might kill me. To I, I might not know what to do. I might not know how to process that, right? That... And then having someone else, there are multiple people there to like run up and be like, dude, look at this. What do you think about this? Right? That, that's what, that's what we, we do. Right? So I, I think that's, <laughs> and again, this is no amazing revelation. I think I've talked about this before, but that's, that's, that's the thing. You, you want it, you want it for yourself, but you also want to imagine a world where you're the only person who's into knives, Right? Well, there's, there's an obvious cap there, and it's real low. I think I would still enjoy knives in that world, but, like, substantially less. If I couldn't share it with other people, if I couldn't show other people, even if some other people didn't like it, but that's that's the main... That's what we like to do. That's, that's part of this experience, is sharing that experience with other people and watching them just go from... They're just, like, walking around. They're not expecting anything. And all of a sudden, you just come flying into their life. And you're like, you got to see this now. Look at this. Touch it. Feel it. Breathe it in. Experience it. And I'm going to sit back and watch you. And I want to I see that lightning in your eyes, right? We like to do that. It sounds weird, but... Take it from a guy who uh, his uh, his passion is not only knives, but sharing this type of stuff with everybody on YouTube. I mean, like it's constant reaffirmation for me. I mean, you guys keep you know people ask me like you're gonna get burned out. It's real hard to get burned out when what I do all the time is experience new knives and constantly look for that next thing, and then get to experience it all over again in the form of sharing it with other people and then watching how they react to it. You guys are entertained by me reacting to things. I am infinitely, infinitely entertained by putting it up on YouTube and watching you guys react to it. I just spit all over some of these. Didn't make the arch nemesis. That's good. But yeah, that's 100%. So what I'm saying here is only partially relatable. If I've got any other content creators who do similar things to what I do on YouTube, I would venture to guess that you get you largely get the same level of satisfaction out of that, right? And anybody who has gone to a custom knife show with friends who love this stuff as much as you, you probably also... I, I would say that that's even more potent. I've never been to a knife show, so I'm infinitely envious of people who go with friends and get to experience something and then run... And find a friend who's at another booth and be like, get over here. you got to look at this. <laughs> that sounds amazing, right? I can't wait to experience that. But, yeah, that's, I don't know. I just wanted to share this thought with you guys and see what you thought. You know, if you guys have additional thoughts, if you want to, you know, uh, pack on to that and offer some additional insight. I always like to read uh, comments from what you guys think down in the description. I'm going to open these up one at a time. Sorry, this guy's a fingerprint magnet and I really want him to go back into the little protective case because this is a kind of a one of one um, arch nemesis. So we have the full dress custom arch nemesis with the carbon fiber weave um, double-edged blades, uh, textured zirconium with zircotite inlays. And when I mean one of one, I mean like that is the only one of those that exists in exactly that form. We have the Reich and Microtech 
uh, Annex Integral. We have this new thing from Civivi, and I gotta be honest with you, I can't remember what the heck it's called, but it's new. <laughs> we have, oh gosh, oh no, am I gonna do this again? Uh, the uh, Brian Brown, um, what is this called? I just, you guys haven't seen the unboxing for this yet. It's recorded and it's scheduled, but it's not up yet. The, uh, well, crap, somebody down in the comments will say it. Sorry. New stuff all the time. It's really hard to keep track of everything. Demco AD 20.5 in titanium and 3V. We have the Liang Ma Model 18 in Mokotai and uh, Damasteel. We have the Cranes Cutlery Exclusive Riot Jack 1.5 in M398 steel and uh, Zerkatai inlays. We have the Microtech Scarab 2 Shadow. And of course, the Dark Horse, the Hinder XM24 with the uh, extremely rare um, black stonewashed or the stonewashed DLC finish, which I don't think they do anymore. Uh, carbon fiber scale and same finish applied to the titanium. I think that's actually, did I just accidentally almost, lim almost, except for the annex, they're lined up by size. Um, I think that's going to be pretty much it today, guys. This was a fun topic for me, so I'd like to hear what you guys think. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.